so first we will play so uh, first we will uh, present a video for uh, two and a half minutes then we will go through a, a ppt so we will uh, to give an overview of our uh, <laughs> So we are not getting sound. Sir. Is uh, whether video is uh, visible, sir? Video is visible, but there is no sound. So. Okay, okay. So. It is uh, located in the outskirts of uh, Chennai uh, in Maramele Nagar and uh, in a 25 acre campus. And we have a, a training capacity of uh, stay with uh, 300 members and 500 members uh, with flyers. Uh, so to, I will start my presentation regarding the achievements in the last financial year. So we uh, work under the umbrella of National Institute of Rural Development in Panjai Raj. And uh, below us, there are the regional institutes of rural development, five institutes located in various uh, parts of Tamil Nadu. And we have district level centers also for training. This is the training architecture in the capacity building activities of uh, rural development department. R rural development department is functioning with a budget outlay of 15,000 crores annually in Tamil Nadu. So there is a lot of uh, capacity building needs. So th these are the methodologies that is adapted. So the unlike the academic institutions, uh, the training institutions that cater to uh, departmental needs have various uh, knowledge and uh, skill needs, and uh, we our methodologies uh, suit to the uh, these needs. Uh, so so we have to reach out to 1.2 lakhs uh, customers that are elected representatives uh, of Panchayat Raj institutions and 30,000 officials and to deliver knowledge, skill, and attitudinal and behavioral changes. 
So the major donors for the trainings are uh, Ministry of uh, Panchayat Raj, Ministry of Rural Development, Ministry of Jal Shakti, and National Commission for Women and State Departments. So uh, in 2021-22, uh, we had uh, concentrated on three major aspects that we want to project for the Scotch. Uh, so we were uh, pioneering in a people's plan campaign that is making the Panjaita Raj institution to plan holistically for uh, the welfare of the people. So uh, at 1.101 uh, uh, lakh uh, uh, offices and Panjaita uh, representatives were trained uh, as a part of uh, village uh, planning uh, uh, facilitation team. Uh, they were carrying out uh, the BPDP, BPDP, uh, DPDP. Uh, this is uh, linked with uh, MOPR. So Tamil Nadu has been successful because of the extensive training. Tamil, Tamil Nadu was uh, successful in uh, delivering that. Uh, next, uh, we had uh, demand for the e-governance and GIS-based uh, planning and training, for which uh, we reached out to 36,000 uh, various officials, uh, from uh, engineers to uh, uh, officers at various levels. And thirdly, we concentrated on uh, converting the SAG movement into producer collective movement. We were training board of directors and mission managers for conversion of this, uh, this SAG movement into producer collectives. Eh? So uh, we, it was outcome based. We have a proof of concept, uh, this uh, uh, curriculum design for people plan campaign and handbooks were prepared and distributed ex extensively throughout the, to reach out to nearly 1.01 lakh uh, uh, facilitation team members. And uh, we had uh, trained uh, TOTs to reach out the remote corners of the villages uh, to train them. And uh, we have reached uh, to 12,525 village panchayats through online and offline mode. And uh, there were concurrent tips of uh, 43,000 uh, for our uh, online mode uh, in YouTube. Uh, so we we trained the officers also to, to assist the village uh, facilitation teams. And uh, we had also done uh, refresher courses to, uh, to motivate these uh, teams uh, in uh, helping the Gram Panchayats, in preparing the Gram Panchayats, Block Panchayats and District Panchayats in preparing the plan. So we have uh, given the, some screenshots of Government of India reporting systems, uh, wherein the Tamil Nadu performance is uh, significantly high. Uh, because of the training only. So next. So in e storage and GE space uh, planning also, we, we were training. So GE applications and various softwares were trained that is useful for the uh, Gram Panchayats and the official to plan uh, and do e-governance e in the uh, Gram Panchayat level. So e storage is one platform that is floated uh, uh, for by the MOPR for which we trained uh, all the uh, Gram Panchayats to uh, have them in place and PFMS also uh, for to manage their finances. And for planning, GS applications were, uh, 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 GS application training were given to the engineers. And uh, it was very useful. Uh, there were significant uh, uh, reporting uh, for Tamil Nadu in MGNRHS in GS based uh, tagging of the assets because of that. Next. So the third uh, uh, intervention was uh, to convert the SAG movement into producer collectives. We were uh, we had trained uh, the FPOs, uh, the board of directors, the facilitators, mission managers, and uh, the uh, who have graduated from SAG movement, who are aspiring to graduate from a SAG movement to the producer collective movement, wherein their uh, the uh, produce will be value added and uh, value they will get into the value chain of the uh, produce in their locality so more than three 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 hundred sg women were trained mobilized into uh, farmer producer companies and uh, they were trained in value chain marketing uh, etc uh, so the uh, to take up them into a, a group enterprise activities uh, so be, uh, because of the uh, we, we were also uh, doing some individual entrepreneur training, training for 1,300 members. So these are all the three interventions uh, that went uh, the last year, uh, which had a significant uh, impact on the out, uh, impact and outcome. Next. So the field level challenges faced were uh, the volunteers needed, more volunteers needed for the people's plan campaign in village level, high volume uh, participation to be covered, 
and uh, need for the professional resources and uh, reaching out to the village panchayats uh, from state to uh, villages uh, was a challenge and in ecraj and gis based applications the hands on experience was much needed uh, for which uh, due to a large volume we uh, we have to cater to their need for uh, hands on training and uh, the requirement of it professional to import training was also a challenge in producer collective uh, it was a new concept where they need to be prepared mentally prepared for to accept the value chain concept and uh, the formation of producer collectives and requirement of uh, uh, pro, uh, professionals for fpo uh, was also a challenge so next the solution found was we were uh, we started floating uh, uh, certificate courses in the same year and now it is uh, materialized rural volunteerism courses we have started to have a permanent effect on the uh, village uh, facilitation teams and online courses and uh, virtual platforms and youtube channels we have resorted for uh, uh, remote learning of these organizations and we resorted to cascade mode of training uh, wherein the trainers of uh, 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 trainings were uh, uh, trained and they were sent to the various levels to train and increase the impact up to the grassroots level and uh, we had mou organizations and we 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 uh, went into mou with uh, various academic institutions where uh, like universities and colleges wherein we were able to get the resource persons and local cooperation and uh, online orientation training were also helpful to reach out the remote corners in uh, sorry corner, sir for interruption can you please conclude your presentation in a minute sir ah uh, yes yes i can come so for e swaraj also we will uh, we had a collaboration with engineering colleges and we for producer collectives we did uh, fpos uh, collaborations with various uh, organizations to reach out for the uh, change impact so achievements and way forward so we have incentivization programs for panchayats to have a better impact and uh, future expansion of certificate courses in uh, producer collectives and uh, launching of e learning platforms and virtual modes or uh, on pipeline uh, for the coming years uh, to have better impact we uh, also have mooted uh, any research projects to get into the uh, uh, further details and uh, changes in the curriculum and uh, for weekend panchayats we are developing weekend panchayats and exposure research we are developing models uh, for the better impact uh, that's all from side from my side thank you thank you sir very good initiative in fact this type of uh, institutions should also be promoted in every state because these panchayati uh, raj uh, peoples just like gaon pradhan sarpanch and all that they get selected on the basis of their popularity in the village but without any actual knowledge of the development agenda of the government and how they have to deal with the Uh, deputy collector dms and sdms and all that how to uh, pose people's problem before them and get them resolved this is a very good initiative uh, apart from that uh, the cross learning which you have indicated in your last slide the beacons of uh, slide in fact the cross learning from one panchayat to the other is also equally important so that uh, they can Uh, project their uh, best practices to be followed by others it is a very good initiative by the way is there not a provision in uh, other states of creating such a in, in, in training institutions yes sir uh, for other states uh, the mord has uh, given funds for establishing sard but uh, uh, tamil nadu sard is uh, one of the biggest organization in india Uh, mm -hmm. so we state government has shown uh, much interest in establishing in a separate campus many states it is it is uh, uh, as a part of uh, regular academic uh, this administrative colleges so our uh, tamil nadu we have a unique uh, big organizations uh, in the entire uh, india sir in fact they can deliver only when there, there is no information asymmetry otherwise there is huge information asymmetry i fully agree with you excellent work sir thank, thank you thank you sir much. thank you sir thank, thank you sir thank you sir capacity building is a continuous process uh, so it should uh, continue or uh, rather uh, uh, experts from other states 
should also be uh, be part of your system so that uh, the uh, who so ever is the planning or executing a particular scheme should have a thorough understanding of what is happening outside the state as well yes sir we are sending our people for uh, external exposure like irma and asi sir and also we are inviting uh, external practice uh, in the name of uh, national resource persons who are empaneled by nards so they are also coming and taking uh, classes sir okay good enough all the best to you thank you sir thank you sir Good afternoon, sir. Myself, Pratap Chandra Mahapatra, Superintendent General, Bar Wonderful Plant Sanitation, Barampur, Ganjam District, Odisha. Sir, government has implemented various schemes for development in different sectors for the people. But the real scenario is how the schemes are implemented at the national level for the real stakeholders. Myself, as I am in charge of drinking water and sanitation, I am going to present my copy. After independence, India faced severe health hazards, particularly due to water diseases, and thousands of people, rural people, lost their lives. It was observed that. After a flood, most of the people are suffering from cholera, diarrhea, dysentery, etc. The main cause was using the poor Nala stream, open well, and stream water for drinking purpose. Do you have got contaminated by several things? It was observed at that time that due to use of such contaminated surface water, the people to avoid such problems, the government installed the wells under a major unit program. In 1972, to draw groundwater, which is safe and free from contamination, and at that time the tubes are very shallow, only up to 50-60 feet depth. Still, the problem did not sorted out as installation of tubes for deep bore was not so easy at that time in all villages. It was not possible at that time to identify the location where water was available on the ground. In 1984, government implemented accelerated rural water supply program (ARWP) in which pipe water supply schemes installed in some villages for treatment of surface water, but not in most of the villages. Very rare villages were, very less villages were taken up. Deep handover borehole installed utilizing ground water, but in a limited number. As identifying location of available ground water is not so easy, the rural people not accepted the handover tables. As the hand pump were made up of iron, due to which the water was of a specific area, government tried to err through various means to motivate people that groundwater is safe and free from contamination and good for health. But people didn't respond. They continued to use river, nala, pond, spring, and open well water. It was observed that due to open defecation, the water bodies are going to be contaminated by E. coli, which comes. To the environment from human excreta, this equally when enters the body of the healthy person, that's all the nutrients of food intake of the person, and most of the time the person suffers from diarrhea, dysentery, cholera, etc. I joined as an field engineer at Sundargarh district of Odisha in 1999 in the Atul's organization. At that time, government of India implemented a pilot project and the sector reform project at the SRP in which the reform Quite as you know, the villagers will plan, implement, and take up charge of operation and maintenance of winter schemes. Government officials will be the only facilitator. Government will bear 90% of the project cost, and the villagers will be our 10%, which may be in shape of cash, kind, or labor. But the main issue was the identification of successful source. I tried my best to identify the source of pipe supply. To the rural tribal villages, I moved to hillly unaffected to the interior villages. Took the suggestion of inhabitants, applied my idea, and last week came successful in getting successful sources. It took two to three days to identify one successful source. To get a successful source, I have to go to interior villages, 
discuss with the villagers, the old person, and move around the village within five to six kilometer distance in forest areas and apply my idea, my technical idea, that is the hydrogeological test, and to take physical identification that where there is vegetation, where there was 100 years before there was any source or river or nala which is not now existing. And analyzing all these things, I identified coastal source. In three, five blocks of jurisdiction, I became successful in starting 121 pipes schemes in just two years. Whereas there was only five other schemes in my five blocks since last 50 years before my initiative. And was, that was due to non finding of several source at that time. Sundar district became second in all India out of 50 pilot districts where SRT was implemented. There are actual drinking water problem in Devon district as a district is full of hills and forests. I joined in Devon district in 2013. There were 78 federal schemes and 3,000 sea wells installed up to 2013. The district has nearly 700 villages. There was no perennial river. The inhabitants were facing acute drinking water problem. In some villages, more than 10 times initiative was taken but failed to identify the source. After my joining, I identified the sources and installed 200 pipeline schemes and 3,000 more tea wells in just five years of my stay. It happened, I moved village to village like a mad person. I identified the sources using various methods. I went to you each and every household, ask them where they are, they are, are we know that our inhabitants we are staying since two uh, in sense of the human pride, they are staying in villages where water is available. So presently water may not be there, but we can find out where there was water earlier. After my joining in Adinam Sassu's process, it was 200 pattern skills and 3,000 more tables in five years of my stay. They were become fast all over Odisha and continuous districts all over India among 10 children districts in 2016. In coverage of safe water and sanitation facilities in Gwandas. I joined in Gwandas in 2018. The district has a peculiar geographical situation. Some blocks are coastal blocks, some are in hilly terrain, and some are in forest area. Identity of suction source in was much serious due to which the federal schemes installed after 2018 was 596. And after my joining, I have installed 502 new parallel schemes identifying success of success. I have installed enable distant level laboratory for periodical water quality testing, the first of first time in Odisha. I have solved the water service problem of more acute villages, more than 100 villages. I have completed the federal schemes in timeline. I write and song slogan speed phase for awareness generation and better sanitation practice among rural work. As an artist, I myself act as an artist in street place. Also, in my direction, we perform street plays for average generation and water and sanitation. I work with a bill for upliftment of rural mass for their overall development. Due to my initiative, I have confirmed more than 1,50,000 functional household tap connections in rural households, which provides 70 electricity water daily with good quality. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Very good uh, presentation, and uh, I congratulate you for your uh, uh, efforts. Rather, it is your personal contribution uh, uh -huh. as per your presentation. But what is the science and geology behind identifying the successful sources of water, which is the core to this uh, the project success? It needs a personal interest. Initially, we followed the geologists who are appointed in our state level. When they go to the village, they identify on source. And they, in my initial time, I saw that if they are identifying 100 sources, sites, and we are going to successfully in 10 sites. And from their idea, I got some idea. I um, done geological tests. 
registered method, hydrogen gas, and these three are available for all. But extra work is we have to take the decision, take the idea of the solution of the villagers. The inhabitants they know very well where water can be available. That is one point. Another point is we have to identify the locality where water may be available. The vegetation type of vegetation, the land status, and the people are they know that before. Five hundred years or one thousand years, how was that area? Some area there, there it is like hilly, but it is in that area. It is assumed that there was one nala and now or river. Now it is in a plain area. That we have to study from our ethics, from our Quran, Bhagavad. There also suppose I am telling that that one was Prachi Orissa. Now there is no existence of Prachi river. That the plain area and the cultivated land houses are there. And if you will ask to the people, they will tell that this was the line where the river was there. And if we will go 300, 400 feet there, we can get water. But presently, our geological study is telling that no, there is no water. But we are getting water. So for that, I have to move village to village, time to time, and three to four in sometimes seven days, I am moving in the village and getting the water. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Got it. Got it, sir. Mahapatra, sir. Got it. Thank you uh -huh. very much. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Good work. No specific question to ask. Thanks. Services which are providing in various areas in the Andhra Pradesh, from starting from urban to rural. So, uh, let me uh, so just starting the presentation. So revenue department is having variety of 62 services, which are having different categorizations. So the revenue department is using the platforms, MISEVA and MPSEVA to, to provide or render the services to the citizens uh, for availing their services and getting the issuance of certificates or transferring the ownership of their lands and in various manners. So these are the two platforms which we are using in AP. So the platform process flow is in the shown presentation, like the, it is a like G2C service. So the citizen will come to the one of me server or AP server and they will render the service with respect to the use they need. So in here, the service will be uh, done by Kios corporate or digital assistant as a mediatory process. And once the application is filed over there, that application starting from the filed application, the SLA period is maintained for each and every service to monitor the status of the application by the citizen in an open source. And they can also follow with the SLAs and how much time it is taking in each individual field officers to process the application. And also the payments are also made, which are being made by the citizen is made transparency and also being able to access by the citizen how much they have been paid. And the intimation receipt is also being given for proof of acknowledgement. So what why we have been stepped into this into the from manual manner because this type of process flow for using revenue services by the citizens are time bound, and we are reducing the cost of the citizen by eliminating multiple visits to departmental offices or to various areas. In total AP, any person can file an application in anywhere of AP to render his or her application. Like let's say if we take uh, mutation, mutation means transfer of ownership. Let's say if a citizen is uh, res residing in Vizag and he would like to transfer or he would like to mutate his property, which is situated in uh, Chittur or Anantapur, he, can, he need not go to that respective district to mutate his or her land. Simply he can file an application and monitor from his or her home or wherever he stays from his mobile app, mobile only. So, and way to way, in each and every stage, the SMS alert will also be sent to the citizen to monitor his application, what is the status. And the, the, the most beneficiary in this process is the rural areas and where the people is having minimal network they also can avail these services and they can simply monitor it from their home only without going to cities. 
So what is the difference? Why we have been going into the digitalized process for utilizing our revenue services in online manner. In the manual process, as we can see here, there is no centralized database to get the data or to use the data for maintaining the issuance of certificates and uh, eliminating the duplication of certificates or duplication of mutations and coordinating with the departments. If let's say if a mutation is being done, it needs to be integrated with the registration department, the survey settlements and the revenue departments. So let's say uh, the main objective is to eliminate these communication gaps and integration of databases to provide seamless and easy transferring of uh, transferring of ownership for mutations and in the same way, whatever the services that are being utilized by the citizens offered by the revenue department. If once that uh, if the services has been digitalized in this way, there we can maintain the centralized database and coordination between the departments will be easier by simply providing their logins. And if an application is to be processed, it will be simply dumped into that respective official login for processing. So due to this case, the SLA time, SLA periods and sub SLS are also fixed for the respective officials to process their applications without any due. What are the challenges that we faced? While well, conversion from manual process to automation process, we have been uh, faced variety of challenges like uh, uh, firewall protections or the network, uh, network problems which are available in rural places and agency areas and technology setup which is required, uh, which is of cost effective that is to be provided in remote areas and uh, implementation setup in urban areas. Why? Because based upon dividing the areas into clusters, these are the similar type of challenges which we fa faced for implementation of services. So how we followed the implementation as we have used the process like situation analysis and uh, field analysis, which is gathering the information from the field, how the citizen is using their services uh, in any pre earlier, how many times the citizen is going to concern departmental offices to render his or service. And what are the guidelines and protocols that are to be considered for each and each and every revenue service? Because the uh, protocols and the government orders will be varied from service to service. And what are the risks if we implement the service in an online manner? And what are the compliances that we need to face to maintain the service uh, utilization in seamless way and avoid the risks? And uh, what are the easiest way to develop the services like uh, uh, in a technological way by using the databases? What type of databases? What type of fiber protections that we need? What is the type of software application that we need to use to maintain the data and to develop the application in a uh, minimal time and to render that service to the citizens? So features and user convenience. These features and user convenience sh uh, will show you the outline how the citizen will benefit by using the services in an online platform and how the uh, minimal time that a service will take to complete for the citizen. So we have 62 services. I don't know that some services are categorized into category A and category B. Category A services means the services which will be availed over the counter measurements within 20 to 20 minutes after filing of application, the service will be provided to the citizen uh, with required, required information or approvals that the citizen need. So and as once if any application is approved that data will be stored and if the citizen came again to the respective such volume or kiosk operator he can use the service in the in means of category because he have already used the service earlier by based upon that data we will pre-populate and provide the approval certificates or approval of details for the citizens and by using this way it is having many benefits like minimal time of operation or uh, re-entries will be eliminated time bound manner and uh, also less time will be taken for the citizens to gather their services. So here, and once we have been deployed the services in online manner, these are the various type of, these are the applications that are filed in E7 and AP Saver, uh, which is AP Saver has been started on uh, Jan 26, 2022. So it has been uh, 1 crore 20 lakhs, 23,000 has been used out of 5.86 crores of citizens who are there in AP. 
so which is uh, in the span of 11 months this is a huge step and huge record which we have made for utilizing our revenue service by the citizens so these are the brief uh, split transactions among the applied transactions how many has been approved and how many has been rejected and how many are in pending stage that are to be processed the applications that are in pending stage are category b applications where the services has to be deployed based upon proper verification in field uh, sorry sir for interruption can you please uh, conclude your presentation in two minutes yep. So these are the type of revenue, these are the categorization of services. Out of 62, we have 14 category A and uh, 48 category B services. So category B service will be have two visits. One is for applying the application. One is for taking the certificates or uh, getting the approval acknowledgements or endorsements from the operators or the digital assistants who are available in nearby such volumes. So if there are any issues or compliances that are being uh, uh, observed in the field these are the monitoring mechanism that we are using by providing the proper persons in the field and uh, in the head offices to request to monitor the transactions and to monitor the client concerns or citizen concerns as they are uh, they are they are the people who are running so these are the different type of mechanisms which we are using and these are the uh, similar GSWS centers which, which were implemented in Andhra Pradesh from 2022 uh, as of now date, where citizens are going and filing their applications within year by such one. And these are the missile centers which are available in each and every district for filing the applications. So what is the output? So due to this implementation of revenue services, the, uh, the every citizen, each and every citizen who is in APK of area, irrelevant to uh, urban or rural, in any, even if in any place of area, they can avail the service and they can also monitor what is the status of the service. And the time bound is very less for the procedure of services because we have been provided SLA period and sub SLA period for each and every functionary officer to process the application. And the multiple departmental visits will be eliminated uh, uh, by the citizen because it is not needed as a will uh, now because implementing the service in online platform. Yeah, thank you. Yes, good project. In fact, this is the real spirit of Digital India Initiative. Excellent work. No specific question to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. No specific question. Good work. Thank you. Team, today I am here to give a brief recording uh, Spandana. First, let's, let us start with what is meant by Spandana. Spandana means he is a response winner and it is targeted to redress the public grievances by concerned officers in a time-bound manner. And a revenue department is one of the leading government department. It provides all land related services. If the citizen is unable to access the fruits of the services, then it is the duty of the government to answer for all the grievances and make the citizen satisfied with its performance. And this is an integrated grievance system, which is proposed to register, track and redress the grievances received at various levels. And the levels such as CMO, secretaries, HODs, district collectorates, and district land la and mandal level offices, which are integrated on a common platform, linked with other number of the petitioner for a proper accountability. In the next slide, we can see here origin of the uh, this Pandana program. Actually, during our uh, CM visits to uh, villages, he has decided uh, multiple. Uh, programs uh, to conduct in village levels and, and he had saw, uh, started many uh, prestigious programs of this uh, from through uh, government of AP. And there is, uh, he has started many workflows and monitoring the motivation, keeping dashboards, uh, feedback reports, reviews and workshops conducting daily everything and he has a successful in all the prestigious projects. One of his prestigious project is Pandana. Next slide. Here we can see the key features of this. 
there are two types of uh, objectives for spandana one is quality redressal and and the time bound manner here is a key uh, key features we have we can resist your grievance through multiple sources that is at the government offices and at campaigns can be registered in grievance portal and sent to the concern officer to redress namely prasad urban 1902 call center mobile app pandana web portal collected grievance day I, it will be uh, conducted every monday uh, in the district level gsws whereas it is named as grama secretariat ward secretariat and the next slide please why it is a good grievance initiative here we can see it is mainly based on the availability affordable and accessible here it is we can see uh, without any uh, problem facing by the citizen he can receive all the uh, government benefit schemes to his doorstep itself and it is a scalable and customizable it is a transfer uh, transparent manner and it was provide standardized and predictable and citizen knows what to ex expect he can be redressed it in a standardized manner here we can see our background previously filing of a petition for a citizen is more inconvenient to him and there is no single window platform and there is no accountability of the grievance filed by the applicant there is no time frame and proper tracking filed by the complaint to overcome all these situations uh, see, uh, during this pandana portal it is very easy to uh, identify grievance status with a unique id and it is a centralized portal portal with an accountability and tracking it, it will be uh, every grievance will be redressed in a, within a time frame stipulated time frame and uh, facility for proper tracking uh, with an sms alert mechanism is also available next uh, here we can see the categorization of the grievances actually uh, for each department we have uh, sub subjects and subjects in this we, revenue department has total 75 subjects and 233 sub subjects every grievance is a minimum range of 3 and maximum of 365 days we have two types of uh, grievances total one is finance grievances and non finance grievances finance grievances will be monitored till the applicant get benefits and non finance grievances can be monitored uh, by the least mile last mile functionary and uh, financial and non financial grievances can be either through or the community or by an individual can be applied next please here in the next two slides we can see the silent futures of this pandana program it was a prestigious program of uh, honorable chief minister and it when it can be raised in a single uh, integrated platform and grievances are categorized into high normal and low citizen can easily access the portal and know his grievance the status with his unique id there is a other link to avoid the duplication and there is an sms facility at facility at each stage of this uh, uh, grievances whenever he raise the grievance he, he will receive an update uh, regarding the status where it is and uh, where it is uh, at which level of the officer and the endorsement will be given at the each stage in the next slide and uh, here we can have the uh, one more uh, mechanism there is a reopen mechanism if the citizen is not satisfied with the, with the output or endorsement given by the other uh, officials he can have the authority to reopen the message and he can get the proper redressal until he get uh, satisfied uh, it is a healthy relationship uh, between citizen and officers will be more uh, maintained here and there is a corruption free government officers we can see here and there is a performance measurement of departments it should is division level officers and village level employees can be shared uh, for field verification will be conducted at, for each grievance and it will be uh, monitored by the higher officials for, uh, for the proper tracking and proper resolvement 
dashboard mechanism established for regular monitoring of the drivens at a glance. Here we can see the benefits. Uh, as, a, as of now, uh, we can see that uh, there is a subjects and subsubjects. For each subject, we have the SLA period. It will be mentioned uh, for the redressal of the particular grievance. Beyond the grievance, redressal means there will be some lack of uh, uh, proper documents, uh, uh, lack of proper documents, relevant documents. The, due to this, it, it may be delayed. Otherwise, the, all the grievances will be redressed within the time frame. And other is linked to track and to avoid uh, duplication as uh, discussed before. And there is a dedicated team for uh, each level to handle the grievances. People can also register the grievance through phone or web. The petitioner information or easily approved history is also available in each stage. Reopen mechanism is will reach the citizen satisfaction level uh, finally. Here we can see the right uh, uh, Spandana application receipt. Next slide, please. Uh, here in this slide, uh, we can to uh, knew that uh, revenue department financial year wise uh, status grievances of received and disposed. And whereas uh, for the last financial year in the revenue department in the top uh, below of the table, we can see the total grievances uh, received. Uh, 1,55,303 and uh, at, at most uh, uh, disposal can be taken care by the all the officials uh, which are present in the least level, up to least level. In the next slide, here we can see the complete picture of the grievances uh, received within the one year. Here we can see total redress of 1,43,000 and within SLA is a more uh, concentrated thing and beyond SLA is less. Uh, here we can see uh, reopened also very less cases we can see, uh, but we redressed before we, um, within the time frame that is the main target of this uh, revenue department uh, Spandana program. Next slide. Uh, for the next two slides, we can see the, the district progress of the um, Spandana grievances received in progress and uh, in redressed and opened, reopened cases. And the uh, next one, here we can see subject wise Spandana grievances. Here are the topmost 10 uh, subjects which are uh, named as record of rights uh, like uh, passbooks, encroachments, uh, land grabbing, employee service related, misave grievances, F-line petitions, assignment house sites, general survey, land administration, Budar. If any part of the data is uh, mistakes in Budar, uh, that will be filed by the grievances. These are the topmost subjects uh, can be taken in Spandana. And uh, there we have a future course. In this future course, we have uh, actually we, uh, around the world, we have 66 percent of civil cases in India, but uh, we are trying to overcome uh, each and every ROR. Actually, we are taking the record of rights as the priority and we are taking the rejection whenever uh, it is occurred in the field level without any reason. Uh, it simply rejected means so then we are going to make such uh, suggestions to itself. We are having future plans and uh, for auto appeal provision also one of the uh, SLA uh, we are giving to this. And the next thing is uh, For revision also, citizen, uh, if any rejection occurs, RDO will guarantee push the joint collector and there will be a uh, district level committee consisting of retired IS officer, chairman or judge as member and take policy decision on matters like uh, dot alliance, Sada Bainama, which are the prestige uh, per rules in vogue. And uh, there, this will reduce uh, previous rejections and reopen of the grievances. 
and uh, there will be a training awareness on various services and we, it will be delivered at uh, GSWS or APSEVA portal. Uh, there can be awareness uh, can be conducted at, e at each level. And district legal services shall take an on active role in Spandana related subjects, guiding the petitioner to uh, approach the court of law. Next, please. And finally, I can conclude my session. Uh, Spandana, uh, there is a quote by Nelson Mandela, holding on to a grievance or a resentment is like uh, drinking poison and thinking it will kill your enemy. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, ma'am. Very good uh, initiative. In fact, a similar initiative also exists in UP. It is called Johnson Y Kind, Johnson Y Portal. It is uh, uh, Chief Minister's portal. Uh, whatever you have mentioned, it is also similar to that. And uh, usually 14 days uh, is the time during which either he receives the confirmation or the issue is resolved. What is your um, experience? How in how many days the uh, grievances are resolved? Uh, we have the particular time period for each service. We have a land related services mainly. In the for that each uh, service we have a pe uh, SLA period. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, due to lack of uh, proper uh, documents only, the services mainly rejecting uh, some of the cases. But uh, anyway, we have the SLA period and we'll try to get the more and uh, more uh, cases to be rectified as soon as possible, with, uh, be within the SLA only. And these uh, uh, complaints can be registered uh, through common service centers, I hope, in the villages? Uh, yes, through or... citizen uh, itself, uh, he can uh, raise his grievance uh, by mobile or uh, through GSWS also he can raise the Spandan, uh, I mean Spandana grievance. Sir. Very good, very good. In fact, we have uh, village level uh, ward secretariat and uh, village secretariat. There sure, also he sure. can apply. This is the need of the hour. Otherwise, uh, from pillar to post, it is very difficult to uh, for a citizen to... Uh, approach each and every officer for a different purpose, but it is in a unified manner, it can be dealt on a portal. Excellent yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma yes, I fully agree with uh, Mr. Sharma. It's a good work and uh, keep it up. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, your presentation is, is visible. Please go ahead. Punaya sir, uh, he is acting as a mission director and uh, uh, director of municipal administration for uh, state of Tamil Nadu. And uh, on behalf of Meena sir, we will be presenting this uh, presentation. So immediately we will start with the presentation. Thanks. Yep. So this slide uh, is uh, a brief overview of what is the project and uh, how we have implemented and what are the uh, outputs out of the project. So initially we identified there are many challenges which Tamil Nadu state is facing in terms of solid waste management and sanitation part. So we thought of uh, identifying those problems and then uh, we, we thought of addressing those problems through engagement of citizens and uh, conducting mass campaigns uh, awareness campaigns. So for that, uh, we involved various uh, citizen categories, volunteer organizations, then NGOs were participating in that. Uh, we also engaged the students from schools and colleges to uh, make it on a large scale and to have an impactful output out of it. So after conducting all these activities, uh, we were also uh, declared as ODF state by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. And at the same time, to ensure that qualitative services are provided by all the urban local bodies, we uh, also uh, concentrated on getting feedbacks and uh, redressal system uh, through citizens. Next. Sir, I think your slides are not moving. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So uh, Tamil Nadu state has total 38 districts and uh, 649 urban local bodies. 
which is further classified into 21 corporations 138 municipalities and 490 town panchayats so this entire program was conducted in all the urban local bodies we have not left a single urban local body for this program and we had ensured that all the citizens from different uh, regions have uh, participated in this uh, project and uh, it can result into uh, an impactful output any challenges out of many challenges we uh, we decided to focus on this major four challenges which we were facing in uh, all the parts of tamil nadu so first was open defecation uh, we we saw that there are many cases of open def defecation in uh, at various places like railway tracks then uh, near the river banks and uh, at beach sites also so we thought of addressing this uh, uh, point like this challenge so for that we were facing that many of the people does not have access to toilets like slums and then some informal areas they do not have place for construction of toilet so uh, this was the biggest challenge and because of this open defecation there were many uh, fecal diseases uh, which were uh, spreading in the neighborhood so those were the challenges which uh, for open defecation and then in waste management we also uh, saw that uh, the there are various uh, processes of uh, waste collection from uh, households commercials and industrial establishments but those were not in proper uh, condition so we thought of addressing that problem as well then littering in open was the biggest issue because it was uh, polluting environment it was contaminating groundwater and soil so these were the major issues of uh, waste management then third problem was manual scavenging we we uh, realized that there are many uh, cases of fatalities uh, where manual scavenging is taking place mostly in the uh, rural areas suburban areas so we uh, also wanted to address this problem then fourth wall, fourth problem is unauthorized hoardings so because this hoardings are uh, placed in an, in an unauthorized manner and without taking per permissions from the urban local bodies there were many problems there were uh, problems uh, like obstacles in riders vision and traffic movement then there were cases of accidents because of that so these are the overall uh, challenges which we are facing and we thought of addressing these challenges in the uh, first phase next so these are the pictorial view of the challenges we have discussed thanks uh here we are uh, trying to show what are the solutions what are the measures we have taken as a state and what are the outcomes that we have achieved uh, to the major extent so first our problem was open defecation so to eliminate open defecation we constructed 5 lakh 10000 uh, individual household latrines then 8730 community toilets 3200 public toilets so that all the people in the state has access to uh the toilet facilities even in commercial and public places as well we have constructed many public toilets and we have ensured that all the uh areas which uh do not have which have limitations of uh, uh, construction of toilets in their houses we have ensured that community toilets should be there in easy access at every uh, 500 meter distance so we have ensured that part also then uh we have uh, conducted many awareness programs and campaigns and in which we have motivated citizens to use public toilets and uh, commercial toilets whichever is nearby to that uh, to their destination so that we can completely eliminate open defecation and urination from the state and later on we were uh, tamil nadu was also declared open defecation free state by ministry of housing and urban affairs second challenge was waste management so uh, whatever waste was generated from in the city uh, we uh, most of the ulbs were not having a proper facility to deal with that waste so we we decided to construct 998 numbers of micro composting centers then to uh, total in total 109 biomethanation and cng plants uh, then on site composting centers so that uh this is kind of decentralized processing of bad waste 
so through this we can uh, directly dispose of this wet waste into this processing facilities and it can be converted into compost and manure also we were having uh, this we were facing this problem of uh, littering in open and that waste was going into the water bodies and nalas and storm water drains so for that we had taken various various measures that includes that also includes installation of screens at inlet and outlet points so that waste doesn't enter into the water bodies also we have uh, conducted various campaigns like cleaning of beaches and then cleaning of river banks uh, by engaging various cities uh, citizen categories then volunteers and uh, we are also ensuring that we uh, introduce some 3r activities or by which we can reduce the waste at source itself and even if uh, waste is generated then we can further reuse and recycle it so that it doesn't go to the landfill or it doesn't go to the processing facility so uh, just to support the circular economy then uh, then third third challenge was manual scavenging so uh, we formed uh, different committees uh where local authority or designated officer has to ensure that uh manual scavenging first of all it doesn't happen and if in uh, in unavoidable cases it has to be approved by the highest authority in the ULB and we have to ensure that all the safety measures safety gears and ppe kits are there uh, before uh, taking up this activity so that we have ensured all these things and we have we are also enforcing manual uh, we are also enforcing the ban on manual scavenging so that all the uh, scavenging happens through mechanized equipments and then uh, we use uh, maximum uh, mechanized equipments for cleaning of sewers and septic tanks so that we are ensuring to eliminate manual scavenging then uh, fourth one is unauthorized hoardings so we have conducted many uh, drives to remove unauthorized hoardings and digital banners and uh, also government has put a ban uh, on fixing of hoardings in private lands as well as open spaces next so these are the outcomes these are the pictorial views of uh, uh, events which we have conducted uh, various com campaigns and awareness programs we have uh, conducted in the state next so uh, these are the highlights of uh, uh, the activities we are conducting and we have conducted so far uh, first is a people movement for clean cities on, in all the urbs then we are also focusing on converting garbage vulnerable points to uh, selfie points or either in uh, beautifying it into some other purpose then uh, we are pasting qr codes for collecting feedbacks from citizens whether they are finding this public toilets community community toilets in a good manner are the services uh, in place or not so for that we are pasting qr codes at each uh, public and community toilets then uh, we are also promoting uh, mobile applications like swachhta app and other local applications which are uh, developed by the urban local bodies for collecting uh, for Uh, registering the complaints from citizens and we have also uh, uh, formed one sls service level agreement that within a stipulated time period all the complaints should get resolved and uh, it should be informed to the uh, complainer then we uh, we are also uh, promoting ways to wonder parks we are engaging students from schools and colleges uh, in that they can they they are using the waste dry waste and even the kitchen waste and uh, they are uh, they are coming up with the innovative solutions they are creating toys out of it and they are also uh, manufacturing some kind of uh, wonders waste to wonders uh, sorry sir for interruption can you please uh, conclude your yes, presentation yes yes i'll, I'll just take i'll just take 2 minutes more so this is about people's movement these are the theme things on which we decided to conduct this entire uh, movement the entire project and this project we are conducting with all the ulbs on every second and fourth saturday
so these are some of the themes which have, we have already mentioned so we have till now we have completed uh, uh, most of the events and uh, in future we are also going to uh, do this event for elimination of uh, construction and demolition based next so these are the pictorial views of uh, uh, our honorable cm who inaugurated this event next these are the campaigns in which uh, higher authorities were present then oath ceremony happened uh, schools and uh, schools uh, school students and uh, college students participated next these are some of the outcomes like uh, after this uh, conducting this campaigns uh, with, these are the outcomes like 9000 elected representative participated around 70000 volunteer students so far has participated in this events then uh, this many persons have have downloaded this swachhta app around 3000 garbage vulnerable points hotspots have been transformed this kilometer of uh, length of uh, storm water drain has been desilted then this number of uh, 1000 number of water bodies are already cleaned and uh, 60000 trees are planted next then more than 5 lakh people are sens uh, sensitized uh, through volunteers, NGOs, and RWS. Then uh, 3,000 schools and colleges participated. 8 lakh students participated. More than 500 uh, schools and colleges walls are painted with cleanliness messages. Then more than 1,000 fly, flyover walls painted with cleanliness messages by college students. 1,520 metric ton waste removed on campaign. This is uh, apart from the daily collection by ULBs. Then uh, 12,000 unauthorized hoardings were removed and more than 20,000 workers, volunteers also participated, uh, participated and felicitated. There are some of the photographs like school students have uh, come up with this toys and ways to wonder sport. This was a campaign uh, conducted in schools. This shows that uh, they are using the waste and converting it into beautiful products. Next. So in future, we have an uh, action plan to concentrate majorly on 3R initiatives and waste to wealth. Then uh, we, all, we are also focusing on uh, achieving garbage-free city status as per MAUA norms then ODF++ status. Then we are also, we have already banned single-use plastic, but we are uh, trying to enforce as much as possible. And uh, we are uh, also promoting the biodegradable alternatives. Next. Thank you very much. Uh, very good uh, presentation, sir. In fact, uh, how many of your cities uh, have good uh, or respectable position in uh, the All India Swachh Sarvekshan carried out ministry of, by Ministry of Housing and Urban, Urban Affairs? So uh, currently, uh, we are having like in more than 10 lakh population categories, we are having three cities which are highlighted in the list of uh, clean, clean, clean cities. And good. then other smaller ULBs, those are also at present... Uh, uh, given the status of ODF, and they are also trying hard and uh, putting their efforts in coming into the top uh, cleanliness cities. So we are taking uh, maximum efforts to get good scores in this upcoming selection also. Uh, in fact, the whole uh, uh, underlying... Uh... The spirit of the such selection is to promote a healthy competition among the ULBs. That is the right. whole purpose. Right. So um, I am very happy that uh, you are in, uh, promoting more and more ULBs to uh, adopt, uh, to secure a respectable position in such a direction. Very good initiative. Uh, and uh, what is your uh, uh, plan for creating material recycling facility in order to promote circular economy? So uh, under SBM 2.0, Swatch Bharat Mission 2.0, we have already proposed uh, more than 100 MRF plants. So that has been sanctioned by the government also, government of India. And immediately we are starting uh, starting for the tender process and it will be uh, in operation very soon. 
so what we have done uh, for major ulvs we are constructing each mrf centers but for smaller ulvs we are going on cluster approach sure so that among uh, six to seven ulvs there will be one material recovery facility so there we can collect all this dry waste and wet waste and uh, dry waste can be reused recycled or it can be sold to the recyclers also so that definitely uh, definitely yeah your state is a very progressive state and uh, you should uh, also um, i expect that uh, you create a good model so that others can also follow excellent work sir thank you very definitely. much thank you very much sir so would you like to say no specific question to ask thank you thank you thank you sir